We got MLB on, we got NFL on, the ice hockey started, but the NBA is back as well. What a season to look forward to. All right, right off the off, the defending champs, the Golden State Warriors. Can they do it again? Can they repeat? Well, they certainly can. I mean, they're they're in the list of probably, I would say, five or six teams that are clear of the field, along with the Celtics and the, the Suns and the Sixers and the Bucks. And I, I would put the Clippers in there as well. I mean, off-court dramas. We saw the, you know, security camera video of the on-court fight between Draymond Green and Jordan Poole. I'd be far more concerned if Steph Curry or Clay Thompson were involved in the fisticuffs. You know, Jordan Poole just signed a mega extension yeah. as well. Yeah. So it seems like, you know, whatever whatever the cost of forgiveness is, Golden State has paid it. But the pressure's on them. They they just what scares me about Golden State is they are terrific in terms of all the the hall of famers they have but we saw andrew wiggins rise to the occasion in the finals we saw jordan Poole with some clutch shots we saw james weissman a very high draft pick show some developmental skill so whilst their core is is a year older and and much of the nba is healthier and i'll name the clippers again in that the warriors are going to add a bit of depth so i do think they are going to be in the mix when we're talking about this again come the end of may you know, you mentioned the Clippers there. I mean, it just feels like a lifetime since Kawhi played and played at the level that we know he's capable of. Can he get back to that? Because if he does, obviously that changes that team completely. I think he can. And I, I, I do think uh, the Clippers were in no rush to have him return, knowing that an abbreviated season and rushing him back, it was, it was always a long-term play. He's a championship-caliber player. He showed that in San Antonio. He showed that in Toronto. The Clippers brought him there to win a championship, which is a bold statement for a team that not only has never won an NBA Finals, they've never been to an NBA Finals. In fact, in their 50-plus years of existence, they've only been to a conference Finals once. But they have Kawhi Leonard, they have Paul George, who's working his way back from his own injury, and they have John Wall, who's been arrested. And he's somebody who adds an explosive backcourt element and how they deploy him, they, they could have him in the starting five. They could have him as a sixth man, kind of in that Manu Ginobili role that we saw uh, so well with Kawhi later in Ginobili's career in San Antonio. It's an intriguing team, and I don't think the Clippers are going to look at Clippers' failures of years past and, and have it weigh on them. I do think they've done a complete rebrand, and they see themselves as – they see themselves as L.A.'s best team, and I think they're going to enter the season with a bit of a chip on their shoulder, keen to prove that they are the Lake Show, the, the L.A. Show, the, the, the marquee ticket in town. Well, I'm sure there'll be a couple of big boys called LeBron James and A.D. You've got something to say about that for the Lakers, but the key, of course, is can those two guys be kept on the court? Can they actually do a whole season and play the playoffs without injuries? Is that always going to be the question with that side? That is question one in 1A. When will Father Time catch up with LeBron James? We've, so, we've seen some cracks in the foundation of somebody who seemed chiseled from granite. And listen, he's in far better shape than any of us could hope to be you know, in, in our late 30s. But Anthony Davis is a key piece of that. He's had injury concerns throughout his career. When he's fit, he's a terrifying presence as a seven-footer who can hit threes and defend in the paint as well as anybody. But they have some serious chemistry concerns with Russell Westbrook, but they're paying $47 million U.S. I'll, I'll let you do the multiplication wow. you know, to figure out what, what that's worth in you know, New Zealand dollars. But, um, and they have him as a sixth man, and this is a guy who's won an MVP before, um, rumored to be on the trading block. Uh, has has had some very public beef with new acquisition Patrick Beverly, and we even saw one of the preseason games a, a team huddle of which Russell Westbrook was a little bit reluctant to join. So uh, the reading between the lines is all is not well with the purple and gold. They have the per capita talent to run with anybody, but you were right in that the primary concern is fitness, but right behind that is chemistry. ESPN's Phil Murphy is with us as we talk NBA and the season tipping off today. Just quickly back to the Warriors. Draymond Green, not the player that he was, got four rings, we all know that. But there was such a vicious punch and the pictures look so hideous. And I was watching uh, yesterday uh, with Paul uh, being interviewed and he didn't want to answer any of those questions. In actual fact, he shut them down. But just the look on his face, there was a real concerned look on his face. And uh, I don't know, maybe I can't read body language, but it looked to me like a guy that says, I don't like that guy. Um, can, you know, can that team stay together, or is Draymond going to get traded somewhere else? I think that team can stay together. Now, listen, if, if Draymond would have thrown that punch on Steph Curry 
I mean, I, I, I made of my made a joke that Draymond Green would be in Barcelona right now playing under the name Draymond Verde. There you go. Like he would be out of town so quickly if that were one of their bona fide superstars. Now the Warriors did give him, uh, you know, a little bit of time away from camp. They're not doing a formal suspension, but uh, I, I think that this team is going to look at it and Steve Kerr's having private conversations with the guys saying, you know, this is it. This has to end here. But they, the Warriors are savvy enough. They've been in the spotlight for coming up on a decade. They know that if, if we're having a conversation, you and I, around Boxing Day and Golden State is, I don't know, 17 and 15, well, we're going to be pointing to this preseason punch as yes. the reason yeah. why. Yeah. So Golden State's going to know that they need to come out and make a statement in game one today against the Lakers. And that, that, that is full stop. They're going to come out and try and quell any of that because if we're having that conversation around boxing day and the record's more 23 and seven that punch as vicious as it was and as, as jarring as the visuals were it's going to be a distant memory so they know that winning cures all ills and they have an opportunity to do that with a quickness and i think for them having it happen now um all things considered from a pr perspective will uh, will allow things to be swept aside but yeah, you better believe if there's a team huddle and Poole and Green start getting into each other's face, this thing could metastasize and and really be a problem for you know guys who are rotational players on on the closest thing we have to a modern dynasty. Metastasize, what a brilliant word to use. Phil Murphy with us, ESPN down under the Suns. They got so close uh, against uh, Milwaukee, who we haven't mentioned yet either. Then they uh, supposedly the best team with the best record. They didn't do it last year. Do do they? Are they still in the conversation? Are they still in the picture? And then let's talk about Milwaukee. Yeah, there's some concern uh, that the Suns have become peripheral, which is crazy to me because we did see them over the course of 82 games a year ago have the best record in the NBA. But we also saw them crash out of the playoffs. But we also saw reports that DeAndre Ayton wants out of town and has had no contact with any of the coaching staff in the offseason. And I mentioned that, you know, you have five or six teams that are considered a cut above. Phoenix is the or six. If you look at markets, and, you know, I'm not advocating having a punt, but it, there, are, there are five teams with shorter odds than 12 to 1, uh, but there are no team with shorter odds than about, I guess, $6.75 would be the translation. And that's the longest odds for any of the shortest odds, if that makes sense, in the last 35 years. Right. All that to say, it's considered fairly wide open that there isn't a team that's a cut above. If I'm Phoenix, I'm looking around and saying, hey, wait a minute. Do you guys remember the fact that we won 65 games last regular season? Apparently people don't, and they're thinking that Chris Paul is a year older, and DeAndre Ayton is at, it wants out of town, and Devin Booker, while one of the best scorers in the NBA can't carry the team on his own there's there's kind of a feeling that the Suns might be one piece away to contend with the elite over the course of 82 games you shift that to Milwaukee and we've seen them win a title with Giannis Antetokounmpo we've seen them you know make another charge to the doorstep and and and, you know ultimately have a a terrific playoff series um, and fall short now now it's Chris Middleton's health he's not going to be fit for the regular season opener we know that how long does that linger? He had some injury issues a year ago. Giannis, as great as he is, he needs a proper running mate. You would think it's Middleton. Drew Holiday is, is somebody who also we consider the best perimeter defender at his position in the NBA. Problem is he's so limited in streaks offensively. He's very hot and cold. He's somebody, if you look at a box score, it shouldn't surprise you if he's 2 for 10. shouldn't surprise you if he's 7 for 10. You'll know very quickly how his night's going to go. So Giannis can't carry it all. Uh, as as generational of a talent as he is, um, he needs those guys to be fit, and he needs Holiday to be a consistent offensive contributor, or they're going to see themselves kind of fall behind the Sixers and the Celtics of the world in the East. Finally, let's talk about the N-E-T-S Nets, not Jets, who we could be talking about with a 4-2 and two record. That is absolutely stunning. But that Nets team, of course, this is a family that just, they, they ended up throwing Christmas pudding at each other, storming out of the house and saying, I hate you, I'm never coming back. And now everything's friendly again. We're a family still and we'll get together, of course, for Mummy's birthday. Do you believe any of this, Phil? Man, it feels problematic. I got to tell you, I mean, Go on. the reports that Kevin Durant was asking for Steve Nash and Sean Marks, a New Zealander, Kiwi, to be fired in the off season, and then oh no, it's fine, it's good. Kyrie Irving and and his 
uh, unique personality and some of the frustration that that's caused in that relationship, adding Ben Simmons to the mix, it is it is a an intriguing cocktail no less than last season. Um, what I think works against the Nets, if you've ever been to a game at Barclays Center, there is this almost absence of a home court atmosphere. I don't know what it is, but it is the most dormant home environment. Contrast that with Philadelphia and TD Garden in Boston and Milwaukee, the Deer District. That road to the finals for them, basically playing road games and neutral site games, just worries me. But you, you look around the starting five, you got Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, Seth Curry can make it rain from the outside. I mean, they, they have shooters everywhere. Ben Simmons, it seems like the perfect fit personnel-wise for him not to need to be a, a threat from the outside. They have the ingredients. I just saw what happened last year, and then you throw Ben Simmons, who's going to be under loads of scrutiny in the mix. I can't see myself backing them, but I would see myself, if I were supporting a team that were facing them in the playoffs, entering that series with heaps of fear because I know the potential of the team. It's, it's no less intriguing than it was a year ago.